Hi, my name is Lanko Marusic. I'll be giving this talk the flog by the title Flogging a Dead Horse or Tweaking the Relevant Details. The title of the talk signifies that potentially some people might find whatever I do unnecessary, but I certainly don't think this is the case. Um, you know, I think it's actually important <laughs> that I'm doing what I'm doing, but more of it uh, later. Hopefully at the end of the talk you will not say something like, oh, again, conjunction and, and now, but we'll see why, why it is important. Um, so I start with some introduction, mainly based on the work we have done uh, as part of the EMSS project. Then I'll explain what I mean by these binomial noun phrases and how they coordinate and present the three experiments that I have done. And yeah, conclusion is just a single slide. So co conjunct agreement is a popular topic lately, has been discussed already by Corbett in 1983, but actually even earlier, Bayats in the 60s, that certain South Slavic languages, namely primarily well, Slovenian sub creation, exhibit this sort of uh, linear agreement when it comes to agreement with a coordinated subject, so that the verb can sometimes agree with the linearly closest part of this coordination. Now, linearity has been mentioned mostly when it came to like error type of phenomena, for example, at Bock and Miller, uh, they call it attraction, where in the cases of in the examples like the key to the cabinet, sometimes people would say, are they produce or judge these kind of sentences where they would have the plural agreement on the verb in the main uh, clause to be grammatical. So they would say the key to the cabinets are missing, even though the head noun of the, of the subject is singular. Um, so what we wanted to do is just basically check whether this, you know, what seems important to do, yeah, let's say, is check whether this linear conjunct agreement in South Slavic uh, syntax is, you know, a robust phenomena or just something more of an error or attraction type of error. You know, or, you know, whether in principle grammar should worry about this or the theory of grammar should worry about this data or whether this can be disqualified as, you know, production type of phenomena. And obviously, what repercussions this has for the for various theories of, of agreement. A number of studies studies have appeared, all dealing with uh, uh, conjunct agreement. And this has been it's like a popular trend recently. You know? um, I mean, conjunct agreement has been in the literature for a long time, but it really seems that it has the interest has peaked lately. You no. Know? I guess the part workshop, which doesn't necessarily speak only about conjunct agreement, but conjunct agreement being a prominent topic as part of this uh, workshop, it has also proved that it's a prominent topic. So many of the studies that were dealing specifically with South Slavic conjunct agreement did not agree on the data. Let's say Boscovich claims a subtype of conjunct agreement, namely highest conjunct agreement is impossible in uh, Serbo Croatian or BCS. Um, Marusic et al. 2007-2015 claim this is possible in Slovenian and so on. Um, now, what we wanted to do is, you know, figure out what exactly is this uh, set of data that grammar should worry about or the theory should worry about, and of course whether there is what's the variation between South Slavic languages, not only between Slovenian and Croatian, but also between you know the B, the C, and the S varieties of BCS. Um, so, yeah, these questions were the main questions of the EMSS project. And project published their findings in Willer Gold et al. 1618 and Arsenio Richard 2019. And it has been presented, the results were presented in many talks. Uh, so, yeah, I guess Jana will say more about the EMSS. I will just briefly present the, the highlights. Um, so, we, the EMSS was collaboration of six sites. We planned three experiments, uh, one production study, one grammaticality judgment study, and one picture matching study. And uh, the first two were published in six, Villar Gold 1618, the third one was in Arsenevich 2018. The first two were dealing with really what's the degree of what kind of elements are, what kind of agreement patterns are allowed or available in South Slavic languages. And what they found out is that the closest conjunct agreement, which is CCA is short for that, 
exists and is a robust grammatical option. And the first conjoint agreement is also a possibility, and default is also a possibility. So this two, this uh, uh, figure only sh uh, shows the distribution of closest conjoint agreement and first conjoint agreement across the six sites that participated in EMSS. The missing bar that would add up to 100 would be the default agreement. That's not pictured here, but you know you can measure how much it is. So the main conclusions were. Firstly, that linear agreement is the most, well, or at least is more frequent than hierarchical agreement. Hierarchical agreement meaning first conjoint agreement. That the rate of linear agreement uh, suggests that it is distinct phenomena from attraction, given that attraction studies typically report you know, some 10% or something like that of attraction errors. While here you saw the earlier figure, there were you know, an approximately close to 50% of all uh, produced agreements or closest conjoint agreement and that given that linear agreement or this closest conjoint agreement was judged as equally good as resolved agreement uh, and given that the resolved agreement cannot be attraction this is also su suggests that it's really a diff distinct phenomena um, the structurally when it comes to coordination this would suggest that the first conjunct inside of a coordination phrase is not the head of this coordination phrase. And the last study, the Sersenievich et al. 2019, showed that linear agreement is not a result of clodal ellipsis. As, you know, in the, in the way clodal ellipsis is understood following on the Nomun and Sportish 1994. Um, theory, theory wise, um, these studies have argued for an understanding of agreement which splits agreement into two sub-processes uh, namely that agreement means first agree link which is a syntactic operation that establishes a syntactic link between a probe and a goal and that this agree link the sub-operation is also constrained by various syntactically or syntactic uh, or constraints types of hierarchy, minimality, boundaries, and so on. So that, uh, but this agree link only establishes the connection between these two elements. Wh while then you need uh, an extra, an extra operation that basically copies the values from one element to another. And this copy operation is called agree copy, but it happens following a green link. Concretely, a green link would happen inside of syntax proper and a green copy would happen inside post syntax. And post syntax is basically a sequence of various other operations. And then, you know, in principle, it could, uh, it could happen at multiple, I mean, not that it would happen in the same operation inside of the same derivation, but in various derivations, it could happen either, for example, before or after linearization. Um, so, you know, yeah, went one slide too fast. So, in the participles, when it comes to agreement now, a conjoint agreement, this would mean that, you know, participles, participles enact agree link with the subject conjp, but then, uh, because conjp only calculates its number, but not its gender, then, you know, agree copy could only take the value of the number. In order to get the, cop the value for gender, it would need to, well, because it doesn't find it on the conch p level, it needs to do something else. So there's always option of uh, counting on resolution, and resolution would go to masculine. Uh, but in case, for some reason, resolution is not possible, then a Greek copy would have to go inside of the conch p and then look for value of gender inside of the, between the two conjuncts. The idea being here, the, the key idea, let's say, is that if a Greek copy, you know, as we said, it happens in post syntax where there is also linearization, one of these operations, if it happens before linearization, then we get highest conjoint agreement. If it happens after linearization, we get closest conjoint agreement. If it happens after linearization, then the structure of the coordination inside of the subject is just a sequence of nouns, for example, no? One, noun 1, noun, noun the coordinator, noun 2, and then if it looks for the closest available 
uh, noun phrase to from which it could take gender it it would find the closest gender the linearly closest gender the EMSS project have well you know the results being that we have confirmed the data and uh, the data seem to support this theory that we had so we are we were happy with it but of course now that we are done with the first set of data with the core set of data we can look for to test other data you know I mean you can now either go into more details with the theory or you can go into more details checking the other data so this part is about uh, figuring out whether it, the theory covers other data too um, so yeah to get to trying to find more complicated data we can start with uh, looking into more complex uh, subjects coordinated subjects that is so for example the main the typical subject type that we looked at now was just a simple noun phrase coordinated with another simple noun phrase but obviously noun phrases can be also a bit more complex than having a single noun concretely the most interesting ones would be those that would have you know uh, that would be composed of two noun phrases and those two noun phrases would be would differ somehow now they shouldn't differ in case uh, concretely because it seems that case is a prerequisite for, for agreement you know, non um, non nominative subjects do not agree with the verb in Slovenian or South Slavic so you need something that would have a, a nominative case uh, second noun there are these binominals which I call which is basically a noun phrase that is composed of a head noun and a noun complement in some cases these noun complements agree as is the case of this example um, the city of Ljubljana where you know you can have it when it declines it would always agree in, in case so in nominative case both nouns would be a nominative in dative case both nouns would be dative and so on there are also cases there are also examples where you have a nominative complement to the noun both of those would be relevant because in both cases when the subject when this binomial is in the subject position the second noun so the non-head noun would always al also be in nominative case um, now agreement here is only in, in case in the cases that the two nouns do agree they only agree in case obviously each noun will come in to this binomial with its own gender and in its own number so for example uh, you know names of towns need not be well first of all they can be of any gender obviously in, in slovenian um, but they can also be in, in either in singular or in plural right i mean they have this we have this pluralia tantum nouns like jesenica is the name of a town in slovenian or bate is the name of a village uh, or moskanc is another name of a village and so jesenica is feminine plural bate is feminine plural moskanc is masculine plural but uh, yeah, and you combine it with a head noun, it's either town Jesenice, Miesto Jesenice. Town is neuter singular and Jesenice is feminine plural. So the two would not agree, obviously, they would be nominative, and of course, in various cases, case would agree. Uh, but it need not to, because I mean, in some cases, even the same type of binomial can either agree or either not. So there is not much to say here. Um, but yeah, no, okay, the point being that you can have singular noun uh, sorry head noun and a plural noun complement of any gender um, yeah without going to again to too many details about the structure there seem there are many types of these binomials so for example an old name for a scuba diver was Slovak Java and these two nouns would always decline so it, together um, and the uh, head noun is the left one. Uh, the in this in second case, Prismoda Peter, they both decline. The head noun is the the right one, so Peter. Mesto Ljubljana, the head noun is the first one, and they both decline. Um, but Općina Ljubljana, so meaning the municipality of Ljubljana, it's only the head noun that declines. So three and four are comparably. They seem to be structurally completely comparable, yet. In one case, both can decline, in the other ones only. In the other one, only the head noun declines. It's 
yeah i am not making any generalization here again i'm not going deep into this structure i'm assuming a simple structure of this type where the head noun you know has a regular noun phrase with you know with a sequence of functional projections that it needs but the complement noun has a, a bare structure let's put it like that so that you know you can modify a name in Slovenian, so you can easily say Bela Ljubljana, meaning the white Ljubljana, but you cannot use this white inside of this binomial phrase, so you cannot say Mesto Bela Ljubljana. This seems impossible. You can have an adjective inside of this complement of a binomial phrase, a binomial no NP, sorry, but in those only in case when this adjective is part of the name, right? So in six, Mesto Novogorica is perfectly possible but Nova in this case I mean, it means new Nova Gorica is just the name of a town a new Gorica um, so unlike the complement of course the head noun doesn't have any restriction on the number of adjectives it takes it can take as many adjectives as it wants this is a small enagram town of Alpalma Nova it's just you know, two adjectives in front of the head noun no problem with that uh, when it comes to agreement, obviously, um, when the name of the town is the only noun phrase, it would trigger agreement. So, Gritz as feminine singular, the verbs in was destroyed as feminine singular. When it's part of a binomial structure, Mesto is neuter singular, Mesto Gritz was destroyed. Of course, Mesto triggers agreement or controls agreement you know, with the verb. So, it's neuter singular, neuter singular, the verb. Bate is a feminine plural name of a village. When it's alone in the subject position, it triggers, it controls agreement, so it's feminine plural on the verb. When it's part of a binomial uh, noun phrase, it's the head noun, the village, which is feminine singular that controls agreement, as in 11. So it's clear, it seems to be the case, now that in this town X binominals, it's always the town or the village or whatever comes in front that controls the agreement, not the the name of the town or village or whatever you know assuming the structure we had this makes sense obviously because this head noun i mean the head noun, the town or the village is structurally higher or one way or the other so the relevant question now is what happens when these things are coordinated now boskovic discusses uh, uh, one such example and he says that actually it proves that any theory that resorts to linearity makes the wrong prediction namely that i mean so his example 12 says is like this all towns and all villages uh, named police are beautiful where beautiful or are beautiful agrees with the head noun villages but not with police the name of these villages now here both of these nouns are in plural both of the head nouns are in plural so it's potentially a bit of a different construction we'll mention it later uh, so he says that yeah a, a theory that would uh, you know resort to linearity or try to derive the pattern of closest conjugal agreement via some sort of linear, linear precedence relation it would predict the agreement should be with police with in feminine plural yet this is supposedly impossible um, indeed it seems that our theory the Marushi et al or metal 2015 or Vegetal, so Willard Gold et al 2016-18 make this prediction because well a Greek copy when it happens after linearization it should go for the closest available noun now this is you know if you co co linearize coordination of two binomials of this type you get a sequence of noun nouns n1 n2 n3 n4 with, with conjunction somewhere in the middle and then of course the closest available noun is four this is under the assumption obviously that there is no structural or any type of other break in between the two noun phrases of a binomial construction mm, namely Obviously, uh, if you have a relative clause following a noun, something like you know, notebooks which are being held to go together by paper clips, or which paper clips are holding together, uh, the paper clips in this 13, for example, is in nominative case, 
and there's just no way of seeing how this could control agreement on the verb. Now, the easiest explanation out of this thing is that, or at least for us, anything that's inside of a relative clause is unavailable for to control agreement for the simple reason that relative clauses are phases. Phases are spelled out earlier and they then even if you linearize you just don't see those nouns because they are or they have been already spelled out now we can quickly return to the earlier example by Boscovich, which was you know all villages all towns and all villages which are named police uh, have been uh, are beautiful the part which are named police even though it i mean could have easily been seen as uh, say a reduced relative clause in which case it would also be phasally or structurally different from a regular binomial construction of the type the town of Frankfurt, the town of Hesse or whatever. So what we are looking for is really something more, you know, a clearer example that would either prove or disprove something would be a nominal, uh, sorry, uh, singular binomial, uh, so singular noun phrase with a complement that is of different gender and uh, uh, number. So what I would want to test is really a coordination of binomials of the type given here in the box. So town x and town y or town x, town y and town z where the three towns or the three head nouns would be for example neuter singular or masculine singulars so that the verb agreement if the head nouns would control agreement should be either masculine plural or neuter plural and then the complement of the last uh, uh, binomial should be feminine plural in which case then you know finding some feminine plural agreement on the verb would really mean that that agreement came from this particular binomial and nowhere else the other option would be to have you know the name one of the town name two of the town and uh, town Z and then the other first two would be masculine singular or whatever shouldn't be plural obviously uh, should, shouldn't be feminine plural or feminine and then the town uh, obviously either neuter singular or masculine singular and uh, the name of the by sorry the complement of the last inside of the last binomial should be feminine plural and then again we should check what kind of agreement this kind of construction would trigger. Any instance, any instance of feminine plural agreement on, in these two constructions could only result from agreement with the closest noun. So, I mean, these seem clearer examples to, to test. So I designed this experiment and I had, it was a grammaticality judgment task uh, with a scale one to five with four items per condition. Uh, so there were nine conditions, but I'm giving here only seven, so two are were even slightly more irrelevant, they didn't fit on this page. Um, there were, so it was a non-coordinated binomial, so town plus a name, in the town of Frankfurt, um, the town of Frankfurt with feminine plural agreements so or something that would agree with the name of the town. Uh, town X neuter singular agreement on the verb so something that would agree with the head noun and then pairs of these coordinations so the first pair is something like town Z town Y and town X where X is the feminine plural complement and verb agreeing with this complement and then the same type of subject with neuter plural agreement on the verb and then this simpler Z, Y and town X, feminine plural agreement, Z, Y and town X, masculine plural agreement. So, you know, the, looking at the structure of these phenomena, you should, I mean, we should, it, it, it's obvious that you know, feminine plural agreement should not be possible. So that's why I wrote structurally bad is the first, the third and the fifth. But according to, you know, the way, let's say, Boscovic understood the, our prediction, but not only Boscovic, no, let's say, um, we could say that, well, the first one is predicted to be bad from our theory, or linear theory, but the other 
six or the other five in this case are predicted to be good. So there were also 34 fillers and um, among them were six controls, three OK, three stars. And 34 subjects were uh, doing the experiment. They were all high school students who recruited a local high school here in Novorica. And one was excluded because he or she failed at controls. That uh, the examples were of this type. So we had town uh, X, so there was this non-coordinated binomial construction with a name of a town that was um, in feminine, sorry, in feminine plural, yeah. So this was Opcina Dumjale, Bodo Pochastile, Neka Adlicin Halpinista, Dumjinski Nagrani. The municipality of Dumjale will honor some excellent climbers with municipal awards. Dumjale is a feminine plural name, Opcina is a feminine singular uh, head noun, and the verb here agrees with the head noun. Sorry, not with the head noun, with the name in feminine plural. Uh, the other one was uh, the village of Rote, Rote again being a feminine plural uh, uh, complement of the binomial, uh, is present verb agreeing in feminine singular with the head, uh, with the head noun, which is also feminine singular. So the village of Rote is present in the culture map of Slovenia already for centuries. These were the two simple ones. Now that I'll present just two more complicated examples. So it was so this one is a coordination of two place names and then a binomial, so duplex from and the town of Hoce, who won the organization of the national championship in Boce, where the verb won predobile agrees with Hoce, so the complement of the inside of this binomial in feminine plural. And duplex and from are two Place, name the place names that are bo both masculine singular and town is masculine singular so you would expect masculine plural here agreement <coughs> and the other coordination was of this type so town uh, the town of Tolmin the town of Idria and the uh, well, town of Sechole wanted to unite forces at the renovation of their museums so when you have uh, the last binomial, so three binomials, no, each one, uh, the head noun always being neuter singular, and agreeing an agreement on the verb neuter plural. Um, and these are the results. I'll present it here with the table because it seems easier to to see. So we have the non-coordinated binomial with feminine plural agreement being you know predicted to be bad by both versions by both theories or all theories and indeed it was it was the worst judged as the worst the non-coordinated binomial with neuter singular agreement was judged by like the best but it's pre predicted to be good by by both but of the pair of two uh, the two pairs of coordinated examples, they were in principle judged approximately equally. So the uh, fifth and the sixth uh, line, ZY and, and town X, with feminine plural agreement was actually, yeah, was basically got the same grade as uh, ZY and town X with masculine plural agreement on the world. And uh, the longest one, Town Z, Town Y, Town X was actually actually was even judged as better when it had feminine plural agreement than when it had neutral plural agreement. Um, so statistically, there was difference between coordinated and non-coordinated binomials. So you say Town X with feminine plural agreement versus Town Z, Town Y, and Town X in feminine plural agreement. Uh, show the statistical difference, statistically significant difference. But there was no statistically significant difference between masculine plural and feminine plural agreement in coordinations of the type Z and Y and town X and then yeah, with the verb in either two agreement. So the conclusions following the, the conclusion following this experiment is 
that well coordination behaves differently. Now one possible question is is this potentially a case of, of attraction? And I, the simple logic would be that well if this would be attraction, you would expect the conditions in which verbal agreement is on is with the second noun, so in feminine plural, to be faster. But actually those conditions were the slowest. So this is the, the fifth this one here. They were the slowest, therefore you know, a simple explanation would be that well, you know, it doesn't seem to be attraction. I mean attraction seems like an error that you would sort of misunderstood what was written there and just clicked something uh, yeah, you, uh, sort of failed to see that this is a complement of the head noun. Um, simple logic. Now the results are still a bit surprising even though I said they confirm the way our theory could be understood. Um, and then I also noticed there were some problems with the design anyway so I decided to rerun the experiment but redo it actually so start from scratch so to say. No? And I designed the second experiment with six conditions only, five items per condition and 30 fillers on top, where I only used these uh, co uh, conditions. Yeah, so there was uh, the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth are the same as in the previous example. So we had a non coordinated binomial with feminine plural complement of the noun, agreeing with feminine plural the non-coordinated binomial agreeing with where a verb agrees with the head noun coordinated binomial but this simple coordinate simply coordinated binomial again one agreeing with the uh, complement of the binomial one agreeing with masculine plural so with all coordinations together and then there was this basically a control case where i just wanted to make sure that people do understand this uh feminine plural feminine plural names as feminine plural so that you know Yesenice as I said earlier or Rote or Bate all these names that are treated as feminine plural that, that I treat them as feminine plural in the experiment every every subject would understand them the same and then there was just some yeah, another control in the case in the sense that was just testing whether people would accept masculine plural agreement for this type of conjunction when it doesn't include feminine plural but a feminine singular name. So the crucial condition here is obviously this one, the coordination of uh, including a binomial with a feminine plural complement with feminine plural agreement on the verb. It's predicted to be good for a linear theory and it's predicted to be bad given the structure that we assume and of this one and obviously the comparison between this and the non-coordinated uh, binomial with the same agreement. So yeah, it included the Latin square design of the critical four conditions so that each subject of the, ta of the type town X was paired both with neuter singular and with feminine plural agreement. The same with the coordinated cases. So experiment two was, I did the recruitment online I put this link on the Xenia website and I advertised it on a mailing list that's predominantly populated by language professionals, which is potentially was the mistake. Um, now, it was five subjects were excluded, so there were 25 subjects, five were excluded because they failed the controls. Now, for controls, I took these three conditions with the same, with this kind of uh, prediction. Of they, I was expecting them to put like that. So 20 subjects were analyzed. Now, the picture is completely different from what we saw earlier. Right. The conditions that are structurally good were basically at ceiling. The conditions that were structurally bad are basically at the bottom. And there's nothing in between. So there's no need to check statistics here because the picture is pretty clear. But yeah, and there is obviously no difference between coordinated and non-coordinated binomials. So something went wrong. And the question is, what happened? Um, as I said, most likely, I mean, my, some, my thinking was that it had to do with this fact that there were a bunch of professionals, proofreaders, judging the, the sentences. 
So I thought maybe I should redo the experiment, but just having the same experiment, but different uh, re recruitment strategy. So I asked for 35 subjects to, to do this experiment using Prolific. I paid them a minimal amount, well, the suggested minimal amount. I excluded 23 subjects because they failed at controls, but I, yeah, so, I mean, I had 12 subjects what analyzed at the end. And the picture is again different. So, right, it's not, it, the good conditions are still at ceiling or close to ceiling, but the bad conditions are not down at the bottom any longer. Most importantly, the condition that is this one coordinated binomial with feminine plural agreement got an average grade of three. And statistically, this is different, or this turned out to be different from the non-coordinated. So if you compare the non-coordinated town X with feminine plural complement of the noun phrase, uh, agreement, uh, agreeing, agreeing in feminine plural, if you compare that with the coordinated binomial, then the difference is significant. But, the, uh, sorry, the difference was also significant between the masculine plural and feminine plural agreement of the same type of subjects. So it's somewhere in between. It's not clearly okay, but it's also clear, not clearly not okay, no? But, I mean, there is a, there seems to be a difference between coordination and non-coordination of these binomial structures. So coordination or conjunction does something to them and allows for, allows for agreement for the unexpected agreement, agree, agreement with the linearly closest noun phrase or noun. Um, yeah. The difference was detected, it's not categorical as one would hope, but at least partially it's confirmed that, you know, linear precedence does play a role in coordination. Whenever you have coordination, then potentially things change. This is, I guess, the take-home message. Uh, thank you.